stupid nine to five rut. And that's why I'm Michael. We can work this out together, honey. Back off, Louise. With some court appointed drug counselor to help him? This one that strange is better than family. With a father who won't admit there's a problem. With a mother who can't cope with the everyday stresses of being a good mother. Then cool it. You guys quit your scrapping just for one day. We never loved anybody, Louise. Michael and I can handle this ourselves, can't we, son? Yeah, right, Dad. Michael. Michael, I only want what's best for you, honey. Sweetheart. It's too bad you guys split up. You know, you really deserve each other. I'm Judge Robert J. Franklin. I chose the law as my way of serving my fellow citizens. As an elected judge in the family court, I pray each day that God will give me the wisdom to always temper justice with mercy. What you are about to see is a dramatization of an actual case in family court. Because of the emotional and sensitive nature of the issues presented here, Judge Franklin's courtroom is closed to the public. The proceedings are about to begin. All right. This court is now in session. The Honorable Robert Franklin presiding. Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Be seated, please. All right, Miss Page, shall we begin? Your Honor, Louise Anton has brought this petition asking the state to assume control of her son, Michael, age 16. The boy's father, John Anton, contests this action and seeks custody of Michael. Thank you, Ms. Page. Mr. Bradley, opening statement. Your Honor, Michael Anton's addiction to the drug crack is leading him into a life of crime, including, unfortunately, prostitution. After many months of anguish, his mother has finally reached the painful decision that she can no longer care for Michael. She asks the state to take control of Michael's welfare and put him through a drug rehabilitation program. John Anton claims that he can care for Michael, but he refuses to acknowledge Michael's problem. He's never been there in the past, Your Honor. Why should we believe him now? We ask that the court take Michael under its care and get him all of the help that he so desperately needs. Thank you. Very well, sir. Thank you. Ms. Pullman? Your Honor, Louise Anton says Michael has a drug problem, but she would rather turn him over to the state and let them handle him than let him live with a father who loves him. That's how much Louise Anton hates her ex-husband and how little she cares for Michael's feelings. John Anton knows that any problem Michael may have can be handled at home, his home, with the firm guidance that he can provide for his son. We ask that the court award custody to Michael's father and deny Mrs. Anton's motion. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mr. Bradley, call your first witness, please. Your Honor, I call Louise Anton. Very well. Mrs. Anton. Let me remind you that you were sworn in as proceedings again. And as you testify, you will be testifying under oath. You do understand that, do you not? Very well. Go ahead, Counselor. Mrs. Anton, when did you first start to worry about your son, Michael? It all started about a year ago when I started to notice some uh, things missing from the medicine cabinet, like pain pills and tranquilizers. Maybe if I had confronted him then, it would have stopped. But I don't know. I can't talk to him anymore. Did you ever actually see Michael using drugs? Yes, shortly after that. I caught Michael in the bathroom sniffing a white powder from a mirror. When I demanded to know what it was, he said that it was cocaine and that I shouldn't worry because it was no big deal and he could handle it. And you believed him? Yes, I did. Looking back on it now, I realize how stupid I was. But I wanted so badly to believe him and, uh, well, until about three months ago, I did. Well, what happened then? Well, Michael has never been very good about doing his laundry. So one day I decided to give him a hand and I started to sort through his sock drawer. And in the back of the drawer, I found one of his socks tied up in a knot. And when I opened it, I found a pipe. And then it had, it had a, a rock-like substance, which reminded me of the cocaine. So I went to my family doctor, Dr. Greenspan, and he said that he would have some tests run on it. 
I was afraid to bring it to the police. I didn't know what to do. Your Honor, plaintiff's exhibits A and B are Dr. Greenspan's report and the pipe Mrs. Anton referred Very to. Well, yes. Mrs. Anton, can you tell us what Dr. Greenspan's report stated? Yes. He said that it was a substance called crack. Like cocaine, only stronger. And he told me horror stories about teenage addicts, and he suggested that I look into a substance abuse program for Michael. And did you do that? Yes, I did. And they set up appointments for him. But he didn't keep them. I, I, I couldn't make him go. He wouldn't listen to me. Nothing I do works. I tried love and he took advantage. I, I, I cut off his allowance and then he just started stealing from me to buy himself more drugs. Sometimes I would miss the money out of my purse or it would be a bracelet or, or a pair of, pair of earrings and I don't know what to do anymore. Well, what about your ex-husband? Couldn't he assist you? And John won't even admit that there is a problem. If I had a choice, I wouldn't give up my son. I told John about the crack and the tranquilizers, and he says that Michael is just going through a stage, that he'll outgrow it. I'm afraid he's denying Michael's problem, just like he denied his own problem with alcohol. Are you saying that your ex-husband is an alcoholic? As far as I know, John has cleaned up his act. But when we got divorced, it was because of the booze. He would come home late every night, and he would lie to me all the time, just like Michael has been lying to me now. He kept promising that he would quit, but he never did. And when, Louise, did you finally decide to seek the court's assistance? About two weeks ago. And, Your Honor, this is so hard. This is my son. I understand, Mrs. Anton, but if we're going to help your son, we've got to get all the facts. Now, you just take your time. Take your time. Thank you. About two weeks ago, I received a phone call from the police. They said that Michael had been arrested for prostitution. <laughs> My little boy was selling himself for drugs. I don't know what to do anymore. I can't help him. Somebody has got to help him. Your Honor, plaintiff's exhibit C is Michael's arrest record. Thank you, Mrs. Anton. I have nothing further, Your Honor. Very well, Counselor. <clears throat> and Ms. Pullman, cross-examine. Mrs. Anton, you paint your ex-husband as someone who doesn't care for his son, but uh, isn't it true that Michael's school counselor asked for a conference regarding Michael's truancy that you neglected to go to? I was busy working on a client at the beauty parlor, and besides, they rescheduled that appointment. Yes, they did. Reschedule it three times before the concerned parent that you are could attend. You're making it sound worse than it was. Well, let me see if I get this right. Michael was arrested. He was allowed one phone call. Mrs. Anton, who did Michael call? John. Thank you, Mrs. Anton. No further questions. Very well, Counselor. Step down, please, Mrs. Anton. Thank you very much. Mr. Bradley, any further witnesses? Yes, Your Honor. I call Ron Gardner. Very well, sir. Never thought that in my was Proceed, Mr. Bradley. Mr. Gardner, how do you know Michael Anton? I'm Michael's probation officer. And as his probation officer, are you familiar with the circumstances surrounding his arrest for prostitution? He was picked up down by the docks for propositioning an undercover vice officer. Did Michael give you his side of the story? He said it was all a mistake. But he was even strung out when he was talking to me. Have you had much experience with young people who have turn to theft and prostitution? I would say that about 80% of my caseload has teenagers in that category. So, in your experience, why do these kids turn to these crimes? No question. To support their habits. They'll do anything to get the money. But Michael must have been especially desperate. Teenagers with crack habits don't need much money to support their needs. Why is that? Crack is a synthetic drug and can be produced cheaply. A gram of crack on the street costs about $10. Because it is so cheap, the kids can afford to smoke more. Uh, Mr. Gardner, excuse me. Mr. Gardner, uh, have any of the kids that you work with tried crack? Yes, and it scares me. Crack is stronger than cocaine, but the kids don't seem to understand that. So they try to do about the same amount of crack as they would coke. There are a lot of overdoses. This is a very dangerous drug, Your Honor. It can cause brain hemorrhaging and sometimes heart failure. Mr. Gardner, as Michael's probation officer, what do you recommend be done with him? 
Michael's not a bad kid. He's an addict. What he needs is professional, solid help now. Otherwise, he's going to wind up like a hundred other kids I've seen, either in jail or dead. Thank you, Mr. Gardner. I have nothing further, Your Honor. Very well, Counselor. Your witness, Miss Fulmer. Mr. Gardner, you want Michael to live under the supervision of strangers, is that right? I don't think the family situation is helping. It may be making things worse. Mr. Gardner, have you ever visited the home of Mr. John Anton? Yes, I have. Is it a nice home? Mr. Anton makes a good living in real estate, so yes, it has all the creature comforts. But I have not seen Mr. Anton give Michael any real parental supervision. Michael needs professional help, not free run of the city. But didn't Michael tell you that he would prefer to live with his father? Yes, because he can take advantage of his, of his father. Mr. Anton cannot give Michael the guidance that he requires. But perhaps he can give him the love that he needs. No further questions. Very well, you may step down, Mr. Gardner. Thank you very much. Bradley, your next witness, please. Your Honor, the plaintiff rests. Very well. Ms. Fulmer? I would like to call John Anton to the stand, please. Very well. Mr. Anton, let me remind you that you were sworn in as this hearing began. You're testifying now under oath. You do understand that. Very well. Go ahead. John, would you please describe your relationship with your son, Michael? We have an honest relationship. We talk man to man. After all, look who Michael turned to when he needed to get out of jail. Not that he should have been there, Your Honor. And I'm going to see about getting that officer up on charges, false arrest. Why are you seeking custody of your son? Just because he's my son. He's my own, and I believe in taking care of my own, not turning him over to strangers. I I'm not saying how to run things around here, Your Honor, but you can understand turning a kid over to the state is a last resort. John, your ex-wife says that you spend a lot of time away from home. If that's true, what kind of a home can you offer Michael? Sure, I go away on business, but I'm not gone that much. Michael needs a father, someone who wants him, someone who loves him, and I can give him that. No further questions. Very well, Counselor. Mr. Bradley, cross-examine. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Anton, aren't you consciously ignoring a pattern of destructive behavior in your son because you can't admit that your son has a drug problem? Louise is exaggerating. Did she exaggerate about your alcoholism, Mr. Anton? Yes. I admit I came home drunk more than once, but that's when the marriage was breaking up. That doesn't make me an alcoholic. Don't you still come home drunk, Mr. Anton? No, I don't. I don't have a reason for getting drunk anymore. Not since Louise has been out of my life. Did Louise tell you that your son steals money and jewelry? Louise could never keep track of things. And I tell you, my son never stole from me. And you give him money, don't you? Yes. I send child support and alimony. But Michael tells me Louise doesn't give him money anymore, so I make up for it on weekends when I see him. Mrs. Anton doesn't give him money because she's afraid he'll buy drugs. But you give him money, and boom, off he goes buying more crack. Objection, Your Honor. Assumed facts, not in evidence. Sustained, but, uh, but Mr. Anton, have you ever tried to talk to Michael about drugs? Your Honor, when we're together, we just try to have a good time. And he gets enough aggravation at home. I see. Go ahead, Counselor. Mr. Anton, hasn't your son stayed out all night several times when he's been staying with you? So did I when I was a kid. And wasn't he arrested for prostitution on one of the weekends he was in your care? Yes, I was unexpectedly called out of town, but I flew back to get him out of jail. You left home and left him no money and no supervision. He just wanted to stay at my place to watch some TV. Mr. Anton, don't you think that a father who is as loving and devoted as you are should take a little bit more of a personal interest in his son's life? I love my son. We talk. But not about anything serious, like his drug problem. I love my son. No we further talk. questions, Mr. Anton. Thank you. Very well, Counselor. You may step down, Mr. Anton. Thank you. Your next witness, Ms. Fulton? Your Honor, I would like a few minutes to confer with Michael before calling him to the stand. Very well. We'll take a brief recess. Michael? Say goodbye to Ray. Hey, son, hold up. What is it with that attorney? He's trying to make it look like I don't love you. Well, do you? I mean, you're really fighting for me or just fighting against Mom? What kind of talk is that, Michael? Of course I love you. I wouldn't be standing here if I didn't. Yeah, right. So you're gonna stop traveling then, huh? Oh, come on, Michael. You know my job requires a lot of travel. Yeah, I know. I know places to go, people to see. The red. Hey! Stuff. I've got my personal life. You have yours. Look, Michael. I know these people are getting to you. But you gotta pull yourself together. You gotta be strong. I'm not strong, Dad. Don't you understand that? 
Mike, look, don't touch me. Mike, just leave me alone, okay? Look, you never cared for me before, so why should you start now? Son. This is your fault. If this boy has a problem, it's you. Look where you are, John. Now, you have already had your say. If you have anything else to say, you have your lawyer put your back up on the stand. I can't even talk to you, Louise. You never tried. What is that supposed to mean? You're never the one at fault, are you? It's always me. I'm the one who broke up our marriage. I'm the one who gave Michael a drug problem. Where is he, anyway? He said he just had to be by himself for a few minutes. Are you sure he's all right? Of course he's. All right. Hey, what's up? Is it over? No, Michael. We're waiting for you. Okay, no problem. You all right? Are you ready, Miss Bowman? Your Honor, I beg the court's indulgence for one more minute. Very well. Thank you. Michael, you don't look so good. Are you all right? Yeah, I couldn't be better. John, I, I, I don't think we should put him on the stand. Look, what's the problem? I said I'm fine. Look, can we just get this over with? Michael, where have you been? The bathroom, man. Mike, what were you doing in the bathroom? <laughs> Don't worry, I wash my hands. Michael, do you really think you can testify? Mike, look, it's okay to be nervous, and that's natural, guy. But we have an opportunity here to ask for a... Um... A continuance, and until tomorrow or later today. Yeah, do you want that, Mike? Is uh, Mike all right, uh, Ms. Pullman? Look, I tell the truth and whole truth and nothing but the truth, right? Piece of cake. Come on, let's just do it. Counselor, proceed. Actually, Your Honor, my client isn't feeling very well. I'd like to move for a recess until tomorrow morning. Hey, look, no way, man. I, I said I'm fine. Yeah, can we just do this, please? I want. Oh, uh, Miss Page, call the paramedics. We need that. My God! The diaphragm every time you made love. I'm telling the truth. Next time on The Judge. Would you like a strawberry? A skincare system researched and developed by the International Dermal Institute. Only available at appointed salons. Simple, serious, unique. Come in. I uh, hope I'm not disturbing you. Not at all, Mr. Anton. Come right in and sit down, won't you? How's Michael? The paramedics did all they could for him, but uh, he died in the ambulance. Oh, I'm so sorry. And how's Mrs. Anton? Oh, I drove her home. She was sedated at the hospital. I, w I wish I had a drink. No, Your Honor. I'll admit I haven't been an ideal father or a husband or anything else, maybe. But my boy died tonight. And I feel like I killed him. Is it my fault? Did I kill my son? Miss Granton, John, if I may. Michael was a very troubled boy. I could see that from the little time I spent with him. Believe me. I know what it's like to lose a loved one. And the guilt that you're feeling now is going to be the hardest thing you have to deal with. But you can't deal with it by falling apart yourself. I think you should talk to your ex-wife. In times like these, parents may meet each other in spite of the past. I should have believed Louise. Now I can't do anything. I was useless to Michael before he died, and... I'll never forgive myself. John, I could tell you it wasn't your fault, and that's partly true. 
Michael chose to use crack. He broke the law. He made the decision. But if you had been the father he needed, this might not have happened. As a father, you should have been more concerned, more sympathetic to a teenager who wanted guidance and who was just crying out for help. I'm sorry, but there's no easy answer, John, to this kind of a tragedy. Not for you, not for anybody. You know, it's one thing to take the blame. It's another thing to take the responsibility. Ow. Oh, I've lost the only opportunity I'll ever have. No, you haven't. Michael wasn't the only teenager with a drug habit. There are other children right here in our town who are trying desperately to come clean. And you know, our court sponsors the drug rehabilitation program. We're always looking for volunteers. Just tell me where and when. Well, we need people to talk to these younger kids before they start to experiment with drugs. You know, if you use what you learned today, if you share it with others, and Michael's death won't be in vain. God, then I'll be able to help this one child. Just help him the way I couldn't help my own son. Then I think Michael might be very proud. Today at noon on the movie matinee, Tony Curtis stars as David O. Selznick, the director in an extensive search for the perfect actress, The Scarlet O'Hara War. Now, stay tuned for Divorce Court here on KST Washington. Post Office Box 5987, Sherman Oaks, California, 91403.